Hello and welcome to this 360 degree virtual reality video tour of the Ards Peninsula and North Down in County Down. We're going to be tracing the history of Ulster Scots people in this area. Ulster Scots have been living here for four centuries and we want to think about their lifestyle, their language, their culture, their folklore and their traditions. Now the scene that you're looking at has been captured in 360 degrees. So that means that you can travel with me using your mouse at home or a VR headset to look all around you in every direction. And today we are in Porta Vogue. We are in the very most easterly point of the island of Ireland. Just across the sea, 40 kilometres that way to my right, lies Scotland. And directly to the east, 50 kilometres that way, is the Isle of Man. If you look now to my left, you'll see a map that shows you exactly where Port of Ogie is. Now the people who live in Port of Ogie have, to this day, very much retained the accents, the surnames, the traditions and lifestyle of their Scottish ancestors who first arrived here in the mid-1500s and made their home at a little bay just a kilometre or so of north where, north where we're now standing called Stable Hole. If you look to my right, you'll see a photograph of the beautiful natural inlet of Stable Hole. Fast forward now half a century to the early 1600s and these lands had been acquired by a Scottish landlord called Sir James Hamilton. James Hamilton's portrait is on my left hand side. James Hamilton appointed a map maker, a man called Thomas Raven, and asked him to draw maps of all of the lands where his tenants, his Scottish tenants were living. If you look on my right hand side, you'll see a map dated 1625 that shows at that period, Port of Ogie wasn't even here. There are only eight rabbits. But the Scots settlers began to arrive now. They built strong homes with stone walls. They thatched them against the wind. They sank wells for fresh drinking water. They gathered seaweed to fertilize the land and they ate the, the shellfish off the rocks and they fished. This was a strong fishing community. They worked, they worshiped, they traded and they intermarried. If you look to my right hand side now, you'll see a street directory. And on this street directory, you'll see many of the names of the early Scottish settlers in this area. Names like Adair and Cully, like Lawson and Palmer, like Hamilton, Thompson and Watson. Those are names that you can still find here to this very day. But as I mentioned, this Ulster Scots, many of them worked as fishermen. Port of Ogie had no harbour back then, so you can see a natural outcrop of rocks in the sea here, just to my right, that's called the McCammon Rocks. And the first fishermen would have anchored their boats to those rocks using strong iron hoops, which are still in the rocks to this day. But in the early 20th century, a new harbour was built just behind me, and that's where we're going to head next in this tour. So have a last look around, and then we'll make our way towards Port of Ogie Harbour. So we're now enjoying the sights, the sounds and the smells of Northern Ireland's second largest working harbour. There's a large sea lion, a big harbour seal who has joined us here. You can maybe see him on the left hand side. And all around us are the beautiful little coloured fishing boats of the Port of Ogie fleet. Many of the fishermen are out. They're already out on the sea today, but some of them are still here. And you can see that they're equipped with the very most modern navigation apparatus and technologies. The early Ulster Scots who fished off these shores, they knew no such luxuries. They were fishing in small, open, clinker-built wooden boats, often with sails, often with just oars. They were skilled navigators, but despite that, many lives were lost at sea. In the far corner of the harbour, behind the cars, there is a beautiful seafarer's memorial, and that has on it the names of some people, some local people, who have drowned. If you look to my left hand side, you can see a photograph of the Seafarers Memorial. Now, Ulster Scots fishermen were and are superstitious, hardworking, God fearing. 
The very skilled navigators, they're used to steering by the stars, observing the natural world around them. Often they built their own boats. They would repair their own nets and make their own creels. And at the end of the fishing, a day out at sea, they would come onto the beach and sell their fresh catch to cadgers. Cadgers were small fish merchants who would buy the fresh fish and take it on to markets and fairs and shops to sell it. If you look to my right and to my left, you'll see some old images of fishermen selling their catch on the beach and a cadger with his horse and his cart taking the fish away. Now you can see it's rather windy today and I'm looking forward to getting inside. Just behind me, there's a long, low blue building, and this is Ireland's most easterly restaurant, the New Keys, where they specialize in cooking fresh seafood. I'm delighted to say that Davy the chef is going to show us how to prepare a delicious seafood chowder using fish and produce, which has all been sourced or caught locally. So now let's head indoors out of this wind and get something good into our tummies. Hello, my name is David Cardwell. I'm the owner and one of the chefs in the New Keys Port of Ogie. Um, today, we're going to show you how we would prepare and cook our seafood chowder um, that we would serve in the restaurant. First of all, our ingredients are carrots, onion, leeks, and potatoes. Our fish that we would be using is smoked cod, cod, salmon, prawns, and Mussels. Mussels would be optional that we put into the, the, into the soup, whether the customer prefers them or not. Um, so first of all, we put our pan onto a heat and we add some butter. And then we add a little bit of oil. And once that starts heating up, I just put a little bit of lemon juice in. Then we start adding our vegetables. Carrots, they just take a little bit longer to soften. Then our, our onion. Leeks. We let them sweat and soften a little bit. Then we add a little white wine. Once they start softening and reducing down a little bit, we add some chicken stock. And we just cook that out and let that simmer down. Once your vegetables start softening, then we start adding some cream. And mixing it together. Next, we start adding our fish. First of all, we add our smoked cod, which takes a little bit longer to cook and also flavors your soup. Then your cod, your salmon, and we just poach that in the soup. Next, we add the potatoes, which are already cooked. These are baby potatoes, just cooked and chopped up. Once this comes to the boil, we then add our great portavogi prawns, world famous prawn. And basically that's the ingredients. Once all the cook is, face is cooked, then as we do for TV, this is one we prepared earlier, which has been 
cooking and more or less finishing off, as you can see. And then we serve it as a main course and as a starter. And we like to give good helpings here at the Keys. And we finish that off with some parsley, pea shoot, and last but least, the portavogie prawn. Starter just comes in a smaller bowl. And finish off with parsley, pea shoot, and again, portavogie prawn. And all that is served with Charlene's wheat and bread and butter. And all I need to do now is take it to the pass. Mm, I wish you could smell this. How delicious. Davy's Seafood Chowder. If you've been inspired to have a go at making this yourself, the recipe and the ingredients are on the screen behind you. So, take a last look around now the New Keys restaurant in Porto Vogue. Maybe you'll be inspired to come here yourself or to explore the village of Portavogi and find out more about its Ulster Scots history and heritage. You might want to continue now with some of the other episodes in our series, but as for me, well, you know what I'm doing next. Bon appétit, everyone. <laughs>